Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 11 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll talk about how to group rows using group by, filtering groups, and the difference between where and having clauses. Now, if you look at the definition, the group by class is used to group a selected set of rows into a set of summary rows by the values of one or more columns or expressions. It is always used in conjunction with one or more aggregate functions. Now, what are the different aggregate functions that are available in SQL Server? There are many. For example, we have sum, average, count, minimum, maximum, etc. Let's look at them now. Now, if you look at this table, I've got the salary column. And let's say I want the total salary that I'm paying within my organization. So obviously, what will you do if you have to do it manually? You will take each row and add them together. But in SQL Server, we have an aggregate function called sum, which we can use. So select sum. So what do you want to sum? I want to sum the salary. So salary from TBL employee. So all you're saying is, OK, total this salary for me. So that gives us the total salary. So we are using this aggregate function. Similarly, if you want to say, let's say, for example, I want to find out what is the minimum salary that I'm paying you know, within my organization. If you have to do it manually, you'll have to inspect each row and say, OK, 4,500 is less than two th greater than 2,800. OK, I think 2,800 is the minimum salary. But in SQL Server, we have the aggregate function, which we can use minimum. OK, I want the minimum salary from this table. So when we execute this, we should get the minimum salary. And along the same lines, we have the max function as well, which gives us the maximum salary. So max of salary. So when we press that, we get that. OK, so like this, we have several aggregate functions in SQL Server. So if you look at the definition, you know, it says group by clause is always used in conjunction with one or more aggregate functions. OK, now let's understand group by. So if you look at this table, I've got a, an employee table which has got their names, genders, salary, and the city they are working in. OK, now I want you to write a query, let's say. And that query should give me the result that you see on the right hand side here. I want the total salary that I'm paying to my employees by city. OK, how do we achieve this? Using group by. So if you look at this from a you know, if you have to do it manually, OK, what will you do? You will take each London record and then add their total salaries. Similarly, you take each New York record and add their salaries. OK, so you first group the records by city and then sum the salary column across that group. So even the query has to do that. So that's why we use group by clause here. So let's see how to use that. So if you look at the query that we have written already, we are using this sum aggregate function to total the you know to sum up the entire salary that we are paying to our employees okay now this is the total salary of the organization but i don't want the total salary of the organization instead i want the total salaries paid by city so in our output we w we not only want the total salary we also want the city OK, so in our select list, we need to have the city as well as the total salary. Now, if you look at this, for the total salary, we didn't have a column name. So let's give a column name by using as, and we will say total salary. So this is an alias name for this column. Cool. So now, let's okay. look at this. Select city sum of salary from TBL employee. OK, you're saying, OK, I want the city and the total salary. But you should also tell, I want to group OK, by city. So group by city, and then calculate the total salaries across that city. OK, so when I execute this query, you should see the same output. So the city names and the total salaries. Now let's see what's going to happen if I remove this group by clause and then execute this query. Now by looking at itself, you should, you know, it should make sense, you know, this is going to give an error because you're saying, okay, select city column. Okay, I select the city column and select the sum of salaries. 
okay so you're saying you want city column and the total salary but you're not telling the query to group them by city and then total the salaries okay if I don't use the salary city column then it makes sense okay I want the total salaries in the entire table but when I use the city column you should tell it okay group by city as well so obviously if I execute this query you will get an error stating that TBL employee dot city is invalid in the select list because it's not contained either in an aggregate function so we cannot apply an aggregate function to a text column you know what does it mean when you say some cities you cannot sum cities London New York okay similarly you cannot find the average of city names itself okay it's only on numerical columns you can apply the aggregate functions like sum average etc okay so we cannot use an aggregate function like sum average on this column and uh, it's not part of group by as well that's why it's invalid in the select list okay so that error makes sense okay so the columns that you use in the select list okay they have to satisfy one of these two conditions you should either have an aggregate function applied on that column or that column should be part of group by clause if none of these conditions are met then you get this error okay so the moment we put city in the group by clause this condition is met and we don't get that error and that makes logical sense as well we don't have to really mug and remember that it makes sense you're asking okay give me the total salary and the city column but you're not telling it to group by city column so how will SQL Server know how it has to total those salaries all right so obviously if you omit the group by clause and try to execute the query you get this error and we have seen this so if you look at in the output you know we are get we are, we are retrieving total salaries by city now let's take this one more level not only by city I want to break it down further by gender so if you look at the next slide look at this I want the output like this okay in the previous example we are we are showing the total salaries paid by city but now I want to break it down even further by gender as well for example in Sydney how much is the total salary that I'm paying for male and female employees so if you look at the example here for male employees within Sydney we are paying 2800 for female it's 4800 so I want this breakdown as well so we are grouping now by multiple columns okay so we are grouping this total salary first by city and then by gender okay so how do we do that it's pretty simple if you look at the output itself it should make sense okay in the select list we should now have three columns we already have city and total salaries columns we want the gender column as well so let's put that in the select list so I already have city I also want gender so select city comma gender now if I execute this query without any further modifications let's see what going, what's going to happen you might you know you should have already expected we get the same error that we got before gender is invalid in the select list because you're not applying an aggregate function on top of it or and it's not part of the group by clause so we we get the same error here so gender is invalid in the select list because it's not contained either in an aggregate function or the group by class so we need to make it part of the group by class to tell SQL Server engine alright I want you to total the salaries first by city and then by gender because we want that breakdown in that order so when we execute this query you should see the output that we have here you know it's slightly different here the cities are together for example if you look at Sydney Sydney they're next to each other New York New York they're next to each other but if you look at our output it's not so so obviously we use the order by clause to order the result and if you're not sure on what is order by class I will strongly encourage you to watch the previous video in this series so order by city so when we execute this you know it should match the output on the presentation alright now you might be wondering okay I have by city by gender breakdown let us say I want by gender and by city you know probably something like I want first 
maybe gender and then maybe city so I want first by gender and then by city in this order you just change the order and execute this query you get the same result but the columns have just switched okay first by gender and then by city cool okay now let's take this even more you know to the next step now we have seen we can group based on multiple columns now let us say if it's possible to use multiple aggregate functions absolutely you know here we are s showing total salary by city and by gender let's say I want total number of employees as well now if you remember if you want to find out the total number of employees we can use let's say if you look at this TBL employee table we've got 10 rows there and if I want to find the total number of employees within my organization I can say count of star from TBL employees when we press that we get the total count which is 10 and for performance reasons instead of using star use a specific column name you know maybe ID so I get the same result okay so so what is it that we want we not only want total salaries by city and by gender we also want the total number of employees so if you want the total number of employees we use the count aggregate function so count of ID and if you want to give a meaningful name we will say total employees okay and when I execute this you should see we have total employees as well okay so total salary by gender by city and total number of employees and you might be wondering why did I use the square brackets here if you want to have a space in the column name then you have to use the square bracket otherwise you get an error so if I remove the bracket okay we get an error because it treats these two as two different words but you can you know if it's just one word you don't have to have a square bracket around it so if I execute this we end up with the same result alright so we have seen how to use multiple multiple aggregate functions as well okay now let us see how to filter the groups okay now so far we have seen okay we got all the um, result but let's say I want to see only male salaries I don't want to see female salaries so how do I filter that okay now usually to filter the rows we can use the where class you know where you can say gender is equal to male so when I execute this query what is going to happen it's gonna show us only the male employees total salaries and and total number of male employees okay the other way to get the same result is instead of using the where clause we can use having clause but having clause should come after the group by okay if you remember select star from table name where okay so after the from clause we usually have the where clause but having clause has to come after the group by clause so now having gender is equal to male so when we execute this query we end up getting the same result now let's see what's the difference between these two queries you know here we said having where gender is equal to male and in this query we said where gender is equal to male and if we execute them together you should see we exactly have the same output but the way the query gets executed is a little different you know when you use where clause the tape from the table only male records are retrieved and then they are grouped okay but whereas in this when you use the having clause all the rows from the table TBL employee are retrieved they are grouped by gender and then only male groups are shown filtering female groups so here aggregations are done for every row in this table whereas here aggregations are not done they are they are filtered even before the aggregations are done only male set of records are retrieved from the table and then aggregated and then drilled. but remember it's possible to filter you know the output either using the where clause or having clause but it depends on how you know how you want the output 
So you can either use the where clause or having clause. Okay, from a performance standpoint, you cannot say that one method is less efficient than the other. SQL Server Optimizer analyzes each statement and selects an efficient way of executing it. And as a best practice, use the syntax that, syntax that clearly describes the desired result. Try to eliminate rows that you wouldn't need as early as possible, probably using the WHERE clause. Okay, so now we'll talk about the difference between WHERE and HAVING clause. Now, you might have already understood one difference by now. WHERE clause filters rows before aggregations, before groupings are performed, whereas HAVING clause filters groups after the aggregations are performed. Okay, and another difference is that you can use having clause only with the select statement, whereas where clause can be used with other than select statements as well, like insert and updates as well. And aggregate functions cannot be used in the where clause. Let's see this. Okay, what do we mean by aggregate functions cannot be used in the where clause? Examples of aggregate functions we already discussed, count, average, sum, minimum, etc. Okay, so let's say select star from TBL employee where let's say sum of salary greater than 4000. Can I do this? Absolutely now. I mean, you can do that. There is a way to do that, you know, using a subquery and having clause, which we'll be talking about in a later session when we talk about subqueries. Okay, but in general, you know, you cannot use. Uh, aggregate functions with the where clause, whereas aggregate functions can be used in the having clause, and that's what we have seen until now. For example, here, you know, when you're filtering, you know, you can say having maybe sum of salary greater than 5,000. So when we execute that, we don't get the rows where the sum of salary is less than uh, 5,000, less than or equal to 5,000. So you can use aggregate functions with the having clause, but you cannot do that with the where clause. Those are the differences between where and having. And this is one of the common interview questions that's asked these days, and it's very simple as well. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.